the business for part one of the council. My lords, it is my sad duty to inform you that Her Most Gracious Majesty, Queen Elizabeth II, has passed away on Thursday, the 8th of September, 2022, at Balmoral Castle. I propose that, when certain necessary business has been transacted, a deputation consisting of Her Majesty, His Royal Highness, the Archbishop of Canterbury, the Lord Chancellor, the Archbishop of York, the Prime Minister, the Clerk of the Council, and myself, shall wait on the King and inform him the Council is assembled. I now call on the Clerk of the Council to read aloud the text of the proclamation. Whereas it has pleased Almighty God to call to his mercy our late Sovereign Lady, Queen Elizabeth II of blessed and glorious memory, by whose decease the crown of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland is solely and rightfully come to the Prince Charles Philip Arthur George. We therefore, the Lords spiritual and temporal of this realm, and members of the House of Commons, together with other members of Her Late Majesty's Privy Council, and representatives of the realms and territories, aldermen and citizens of London and others, do now hereby, with one voice and consent of tongue and heart, publish and proclaim that the Prince Charles Philip Arthur George is now, by the death of our late sovereign of happy memory, become our only lawful and rightful liege lord, Charles III, by the grace of God of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland, and of his other realms and territories, King, Head of the Commonwealth, Defender of the Faith, to whom we do acknowledge all faith and obedience with humble affection, beseeching God, by whom kings and queens do reign, to bless his majesty with long and happy years to reign over us. God save the king. God save the king. I now invite those on the platform to sign the proclamation. Drafts of eight orders of council. One, ordering the proclamation to be printed and published in specialist supplements in the London, Edinburgh, and Belfast Gazettes. Two, directing the Lord Chancellor to affix the great seal to the proclamation proclaiming His Majesty King Charles III. Three, directing the King's heralds and pursuivants of arms to attend at the court of St. James to proclaim His Majesty King Charles III. Four, 
directing the Lord Mayor, the Court of Aldermen and Commons of London to attend at the Royal Exchange to proclaim His Majesty King Charles III. Five, directing His Majesty's Secretary of State for Defence to give directions for the firing of guns at Hyde Park as soon as His Majesty is proclaimed. Six, directing the constable of His Majesty's Tower of London to give directions for the firing of guns at the Tower of London as soon as His Majesty is proclaimed. Seven, directing His Majesty's Secretary of State for Scotland to cause the proclamation for proclaiming His Majesty King Charles III to be published in Scotland. Eight, directing the clerk of the council to issue circular letters for causing His Majesty King Charles III to be proclaimed are hereby approved. And that concludes the business for this part of the council. I now invite the deputation party to accompany me to wait on the king in the council chamber. Business for part two of the council. Your Majesty to make your declaration. My lords, ladies and gentlemen, it is my most sorrowful duty to announce to you the death of my beloved mother, the Queen. I know how deeply you, the entire nation, and I think I may say the whole world, sympathize with me in the irreparable loss we've all suffered. It is the greatest consolation to me to know of the sympathy expressed by so many to my sister and brothers, and that such overwhelming affection and support should be extended to our whole family in our loss. To all of us as a family, as to this kingdom and the wider family of nations of which it is a part, my mother gave an example of lifelong love and of selfless service. My mother's reign was unequaled in its duration, its dedication and its devotion. Even as we grieve, we give thanks for this most faithful life. I am deeply aware of this great inheritance and of the duties and heavy responsibilities of sovereignty which have now passed to me. In taking up these responsibilities, I shall strive to follow the inspiring example I have been set in upholding constitutional government and to seek the peace, harmony, and prosperity of the peoples of these islands and of the Commonwealth realms and territories throughout the world. In this purpose, I know that I shall be upheld by the affection and loyalty of the peoples whose sovereign I have been called upon to be, and that in the discharge 
of these duties, I will be guided by the counsel of their elected parliaments. In all this, I am profoundly encouraged by the constant support of my beloved wife. I take this opportunity to confirm my willingness and intention to continue the tradition of surrendering the hereditary revenues, including the Crown Estate, to my government for the benefit of all, in return for the sovereign grant, which supports my official duties as head of state and head of nation. And in carrying out the heavy task that has been laid upon me, and to which I now dedicate what remains to me of my life, I pray for the guidance and help of Almighty God. I have with humble duty to crave your majesty's permission for the publication of your gracious speech. Approved. Concerning the security of the Church of Scotland. I understand that the law requires that I should, at my accession to the Crown, take and subscribe the oath relating to the security of the Church of Scotland. I am ready to do so at this first opportunity. I, Charles III, by the grace of God of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland, and of my other realms and territories, King, Defender of the Faith, do faithfully promise and swear that I shall inviolably maintain and preserve the settlement of the true Protestant religion as established by the laws made in Scotland in prosecution of the claim of right and particularly by an act intituled an act for securing the Protestant religion and Presbyterian church government and by the acts passed in the parliament of both kingdoms for union of the two kingdoms together with the government, worship, discipline, rights and privileges of the Church of Scotland. So help me God. I now invite your majesty to subscribe both copies of the instrument, confirming the oath has been taken. I now invite the witnesses to His Majesty's oath to sign both copies of the instrument.
draft of an order in council authorising your majesty's declaration to be made public. Approved. Draft of an order in council for recording the oath relating to the security of the Church of Scotland to be transmitted to the Court of Session, to be recorded in the books of Sederant and afterwards lodged in the State Papers of Scotland and in the Council Register. Approved. Draft order in Council determining the form of proclamation for proclaiming Your Majesty in the realms and in the British Overseas Territories. Approved. Draft of an order in Council authorising the Lord Chancellor to make use of the Great Seal for sealing all things whatsoever that pass the Great Seal until another Great Seal be prepared and authorised. Approved. Draft of an order in Council authorising the Lord Privy Seal, if need be, to make use of the existing Privy Seal until another Privy Seal is prepared and authorised. Approved. Drafts of three orders in Council authorising Your Majesty's Principal Secretaries of State, the Lord Chancellor of the Exchequer and the Chancellor of the Duchy of Lancaster, to use the existing seals until other seals be prepared and authorised. Approved. Draft of an order in Council authorising Your Majesty's Secretary of State for Northern Ireland to make use of the existing Great Seal of Northern Ireland until another seal be prepared and authorised. Approved. Draft of an order in Council authorising Your Majesty's First Minister of Scotland to make use of the Great Seal of Scotland until another Great Seal of Scotland be prepared and authorised. Approved. Draft of an order in Council authorising Your Majesty's First Minister of Wales to make use of the existing Welsh seal until another Welsh seal be prepared and authorised. Approved. Draft of an order in Council authorising the public seals authorising the respective pub public seals lately in use elsewhere than in the United Kingdom to be made use of until new seals be prepared and their use duly authorised. Approved. Draft of an order in Council confirming Your Majesty's wishes in relation to the Sovereign Grant Act 2011 to continue the tradition of surrendering the hereditary revenues, including the Crown Estate, to your government for the benefit of all in return for the sovereign grant, which supports your official duties as head of state and head of nation. Approved. Drafts of two proclamations. One, appointing the day of Her Late Majesty's state funeral as a bank holiday in England, Wales, and Northern Ireland. Two, appointing the day of Her Late Majesty's state funeral as a bank holiday in Scotland, and of two orders in council directing the Lord Chancellor to affix the Great Seal to the pro proclamations. Approved. I now invite Your Majesty to sign both proclamations. And that, Your Majesty, concludes today's business for the Council.
May I now invite the deputation party and the witnesses to the oath to exit via the picture gallery and the matted hall. I now ask privy councillors present to exit via the picture gallery and the matted hall and invite you to sign the proclamation, which is laid out in the lower corridor. Thank you all for attending today. It is pleased Almighty God to call to his mercy our late Sovereign Lady, Queen Elizabeth II, of blessed and glorious memory, by whose decease the crown of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland is solely and rightfully come to the Prince Charles Philip Arthur George. We, therefore, the Lord's spiritual and temporal of this realm, and members of the House of Commons, together with other members of Her Late Majesty's Privy Council, and representatives of the realms and territories, aldermen and citizens of London and others, do now hereby, with one voice and consent of tongue and heart, publish and proclaim that the Prince Charles Philip Arthur George is now, by the death of our late sovereign of happy memory, become our only lawful and rightful liege lord, Charles III, 
by the grace of God, of the United Kingdom, of Great Britain and Northern Ireland, and of his other realms and territories, King, Head of the Commonwealth, Defender of the Faith, to whom we do acknowledge all faith and obedience with humble affection, beseeching God, by whom kings and queens do reign, to bless his majesty with long and happy years to reign over us. Given at St. James's Palace this 10th day of September in the year of our Lord, 2022. Three cheers for His Majesty the King!